This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It's such a it's such a challenge. Once I came to give a speech and I found myself in front of one person in the audience. There was one friendly person that came to my class. Very nice. And all the class I'm talking to him and my mind is like, oh wow, you're going and you're talking and you're putting so much effort and you're... But I gave all my heart. And in the end of the class, I, I watched on the views and we had something like, I, I don't remember the exact number, but I remember that it was a lot. It was more than 2,000 views. So, like, it hits you in the face that you, you don't know what the Creator is doing with you. You, feel you have things that are happening. For an example, and that will be a good start for our um, class, you're good. <laughs> okay. So, there was a story about a righteous man that sat um, with his helper, they were learning, whatever, and um, while they were talking, the, that rabbi, that righteous man, took a small box of um, tobacco, smelling tobacco, and just moved it from one spot on the table to the other. And his helper looked at him and told him, Please, Rabbi, tell me why you did that. And he told him, No, nothing, just like moved the box. And he told him, No, Rabbi, you never do anything with no reason. For sure you had a hidden reason for that thing. Please tell me the truth. And, and he was pushing, pushing, pushing. And in the end, the Rabbi told him, You know what, there was an intention for that thing and you will know soon. And after a couple of minutes, a woman came into town and ran into the synagogue and opened the Holy Ark and, and started crying and said, Thank you, Hashem, for the miracle, whatever. She went to the river and she was making, like, washing the, the laundry and, some, and her baby was in, in, a, in a basket, something like that. And, and a wave came and took her baby to the, to the other bank, other side of the river. And she didn't know what to do, and there was wind and whatever, and she was screaming, and suddenly another wave brought the baby back to her arms, and it was a clear miracle. So the helper realized that the rabbi was that spiritual hand that was bringing back, delivering back the baby to that woman. So now once I gave a class and I explained, I said, look, if you would hear a story, let's say for an example, on the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, on one of the righteous people that are known to be those ones that made wonders and there are many tales and stories, fantastic, real things like Moses. We believe in that man that he was able to open the sea. We, if we wouldn't believe that there are people that are able to, that we saw miracles through them, we wouldn't, we wouldn't follow Hashem, we wouldn't believe. We, like, in our hearts there are people that we can say that person is different, that is a man of God, that is a woman of God, they made wonders, we believe in those. So if you would hear a story on the Baal Shem Tov for an example, that he went in the forest and one time he decided to do something that every person does. He picked an apple from the tree. I don't know, I'm making up a fantasy now, just nothing, yeah, but... And then he would come and tell a story on that apple. There, there, there was a life, that, that a reincarnation that came in, in and, and dressed itself into that apple. And when I buy that apple, so I set free the, that soul, and like, so... You would buy that story, right? Why? Because it's a Baal Shem Tov. There's a story on Daria Kadosh that was walking with his student, Rabbi Chaim Vital, and suddenly he kicked a stone, a round stone, and he, and Daria Kadosh is walking and he kicking that stone, and Rabbi Chaim Vital looked at him for that, like, reason why you kicked that stone. So Daria Kadosh is answering to him, you're asking yourself, why did I kick that stone? There was a soul that was stuck in that stone for 500 years waiting for me to set it free. So great, so why are we 
believing. Why we buy that story? Because it's the Ariya Kadosh. And on the Ariya Kadosh we can believe. But I'm asking you, why can't you believe in yourself? Because when you're walking in the street, you're also kicking a stone. And when you see an apple on the tree, you also pick it and you make a bite. You bite it, you eat. The fact that you don't have the eyes of the Baal Shem Tov to see the soul that is trapped in the apple or in that stone like the Ariya Kadosh doesn't mean that there is no soul in that ob object, in that stone, in that fruit. So when you move a box of tobacco or your box of cigarette or your matches box or your whatever, you move your pen and you are not aware to what you do, it doesn't mean that the Creator is not attaching spiritual threads and strings to that physical part, to that object, without you being aware. You choose a certain seat in the synagogue. You chose it. You had the feeling, I'm going to sit in the back, I'm going to sit in front, I'm going to sit in the center, I'm going to sit in the side. Why? You must wear a pink shirt today and a yellow tomorrow. And why? You don't like yellow, but today you felt like yellow. Why? You don't know. But there are so many sparks and so many spirits that are involved in creation. And only the Almighty, only the one that is above, the one that is beyond the screen of physicality, the one that sees it all from within, from inside, he is sending the hints. For you today, it's a desire for apples. Tomorrow you want a, you want a prune. You, one day you wake up and you have to eat an avocado. And you don't know why. But you will make all the distance to the grocery store to buy an avocado. And like, what am I doing with my life? Like, I'm so crazy. I'm walking 20 minutes and it's hot and steamy and I don't know what to do and like why am I doing it but I had to eat that avocado so I'll tell you why because there are spirits and those spirits are trapped in physicality and when you're eating it you are setting those spirits free you bring them back home and that's the exact thing that happens when you sit on a certain chair when you choose to enter to a certain house, there are reasons. There are inner deep intentions in creation, things that are beyond our reach and we cannot understand why you feel like dressing that way, why you feel like talking, like today I won't talk to no one, today I'm not touching my phone. All those things are things that when you do it, when you make those things, you are making huge changes in the world. But we are blind to see. But the fact that we are blind to see does not make the world dull and boring and, and flat. The world is deep and you are deep and your soul is deep and the heart of a person you cannot investigate, you cannot reach the depth of the heart of a person, means his mind, the connection to his soul. We don't understand who we are, how great we are in the nature of our creation. You are a creation that is able to sense, to feel so much, to think, to plan, to remember, to dream, to hope, to pray. Do you know what happens when you pray? The Gemara is saying, the ancient scripts are saying to us, that when you are praying, even the angels, that they are spiritual creations, that does not have no connection to physicality, they are made out of spirit. They themselves does not have the power to take the prayers to the place that they are supposed to reach in the crown, on the crown of the king. To that height, to that high divine place they cannot reach. Even though that they are spiritual, your prayers are higher and their ability to climb and to rise higher even than the angels themselves that are appointed on delivering this, the prayers to where they belong. So what the angels are doing, they are making the prayers 
make a swear to, to, to swear that they will go to the place that they're supposed to go. They don't, the angels themselves don't have a clue what's going on over there. That's what we're saying in Shabbat when we're praying. We're saying that the angels are asking Hashem, mekom kevodo le'aritzo. Where is his place that we will admire him? They themselves are not able to climb to that place to admire him. Even with that intention, we are totally nullified to you, loving you, respecting you, following your commands, doing whatever you will tell us with no selfish will, with no evil inclination, with no physical lusts and desires, totally clean, made out of pure fire, cannot reach Hashem. But us, <coughs> flesh and bones, ignorant, <laughs> selfish and stupid as we are, can connect ourselves to Hashem in a moment, with no time, in a breath of a hair, with one word of truth. And Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. When you are expressing your truth, Hashem is with you. In the moment that you were honest, and even if the truth that you just now expressed and said from your mouth was a clear evident to your, forgive me for the language, stupidity, it will bring Hashem to help you and to heal you. Even if you will just reveal how low you got, how awful is your condition, how terrible is your spiritual level, how dark are your thoughts, even if you will say to Hashem the truth that I'm a liar, that will be your truth, the most opposite from being truthful, to admit I'm a liar, and you will say to Hashem, I'm a liar, I'm lazy, I don't love, I hate, I'm angry, but you will express your truth feelings, you will just say the truth, I'm lazy, I don't feel like serving you at all, Hashem, I think I'm walking away from you, Hashem. If that's your truth, when you said that, in that moment, you attached yourself in 100% to the Creator. Because Hashem's seal is the seal of truth. And Hashem Elokechem Emet, Hashem your God, is the God of truth. And He's not asking anything else from you except of being truthful. Being a person of truth. That's what He asks you. To be truthful, to be loyal, not to cheat, not to lie. To be who He made you. When Hashem is telling Moses, listen, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, Moshe is arguing with Hashem. People that have some biblical knowledge and learn the scripts and they know what happened over there, maybe read a little bit more Midrashim to understand the figure of Moses, the character of that person, you, you can lose your mind from uh, realizing how brave and strong and ready to sacrifice himself and to fight with the Creator, the one that sent him to keep what that Moses himself is realizing that is the real will of Hashem, of the Creator. When Hashem is commanding him, you should do this, and Moses in his mind is thinking, no, 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 something is wrong here. And he just heard those words came out of the mouth of Hashem in a way that no righteous man ever heard before. In a, in, in, in a prophecy that is clearer than the ones of Abram, of Isaac, of Jacob. And he sees it all and everything is clear and the people heard the voices and like it's 100% pure and clear message do A. And Moses feels like, no, no, something is wrong here. I'm not doing that. What does he do? He's going to Hashem twice or three times. He's telling Hashem, kill me if that's what you want me to do. I'm not doing that no matter what you tell me. No matter what you'll do, kill me first. First time he's telling Hashem, If you want to kill me, kill me. If you want to do that, kill me first. 
first thing. Another time he is telling Hashem it Barach, if you want to do that, Mecheni Nami Sifrecha Asher Katavta, erase me from the book that you wrote. You know what it means? That Moses is able to say those words to Hashem. It's like most of the people that are serving the Creator, they're asking, that's their inner desire, to accomplish the goal of becoming righteous, that they will be rewarded in a way in the world to come. They believe in eternal life. They want to see the pleasant of Hashem. They want to enjoy and to see the beauty and to be one with Him. Amazing goals, amazing dreams, amazing hopes for, for eternal future in a world that is all good. Moses, Moshe, he doesn't care about those things. He's throwing it behind his back in a second. When he received the holy tablets, handmade by Hashem, a stone that had been made by Hashem, no man ever saw, no man ever touched that. Hashem himself made that stone, carved the letters, wrote in the first time his wisdom, his heart, what that was written on his arm for thousands of years in the eternal world before creation. And he hands those tablets to Moses and Moses is carrying them with honor and respect. And when Moses is realizing that the people are not worthy, he throws them to the ground. I want to see the brave rabbi that will find the power to tear a Sefer Torah like that. The first one that be written, handmade by Hashem, to throw it to the fire, to burn it, to, to break it. How can you do that? How, like where in the world you came with that idea, Moses? Like who was your role model? Who? You know who? Hashem, the Creator Himself. Because when Hashem asked the attribute of truth, Midat Emet, should I create human beings, people? So the truth answered to him, no, don't do that. They're all liars. They will never going to hold the attribute of truth. They will lie to you forever. Don't do that mistake. What Hashem did? Hashem, that His seal is the seal of truth, that He is the truth itself, that all of His words are words of truth. What did He do? He took the truth and threw it down to the ground. But Hashlech Emet Arza. Why did He do that? Hashem, you are the God of truth. You're asking the truth. And the truth just told you people are liars. And it's the truth. People are liars. Everyone are phony. Everyone are plastering reality. Everyone are faking. Everyone. 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 She didn't say nothing wrong. She said the truth. They're going to lie. They're liars. And it's true. What Hashem did? Hashem took the truth and threw it down to the ground with the intention that in the future to come, Emet Me'eretz Ditzmach. The truth will grow back up again from the ground. Means that there is a higher truth than the high truth that is standing stable in heaven. And it's the humble truth that is growing, growing from the ground. When we are humbled, when we are ashamed in our actions, when we're coming with a broken heart to admit I was wrong, it's higher than to stand pure and clean and made out of pure fire and saying to Hashem, I'm perfect, even if you are. You're not in the same level of a Baal Tshuva, of a person that is fixing himself and is able to admit in his mistakes because the fact that the person is able to admit in his shames, in his weaknesses, in his lackings, is greater than even to protect yourself and prevent yourself from sinning for a whole lifetime. The shame of a person to be able to stand and to say the truth when he knows that he was wrong to apologize, to ask for forgiveness, to admit that he disappointed his beloved ones, that he, that he failed, that he disappointed people that only did good for him. That humility is showing that you are not a real flesh and bones. 
It's showing that you are higher than an angel. It's showing that you are humble as the Creator Himself. That the Creator Himself, from Him, Moses and us, are learning our humility. In the place of His greatness, there you will see how humble He is. That even though that He is the Creator Himself, He is choosing to spend His life with us. To live His life with the poor ones with the widows, with the orphans, with the converts, with the Noahides, with those ones that their heart is broken. And the Creator is telling us that He will live with us in the most contaminated places. Shochen itam betochtum otam. Even though that He is so pure, so beyond. But in this world for you to know, there is no real pleasure. The only way that a person is being pleasured, satisfied, enjoy, receive some kind of satisfaction in this world, it's only if the Creator is sending an angel to satisfy you. There are people that when they eat chocolate, they don't feel the taste. Why? Because there is a decree that they will not enjoy from the sweetness of chocolate. There are other people that cannot enjoy smell. Other people cannot enjoy sights, cannot enjoy feelings. There are people that are, that are blocked from inside in certain ways and only because that they are not receiving the pleasure from heaven. From heaven, they block those people access to joy, to satisfaction in certain aspects in life. But those ones that are enjoying, they are enjoying only because the, the Creator Himself decided to reveal His loving kindness on them and to pleasure them while they're alive in physical body. Now, let's say that it would have been amazing if the Creator would satisfy his servants, let's say that those ones that he recognized in them, that they are so righteous, so pure, the holy ones, they will enjoy. And the other ones that are the sinners, those ones that don't care about the Bible, don't care about the rules, don't care about spirituality, those ones that they will suffer. We don't see that. We cannot see that. What that we see is that most of people, when they eat, they're happy. That when they sleep, they're relaxed. That when they buy something, they feel satisfaction. Like, they just, everyone are good. Everyone are okay. When they're receiving satisfaction from heaven, they're happy. So why the Creator? He keeps on sending those angels to satisfy us, even when we're going in the opposite direction from His guidings. Why? Like a father, like a parent, like a mother, that she cannot see her child suffer. She cannot. They cannot. They love their child. And that's where the story finish. They want to see him happy. So for a certain time in your life, you want him to be a doctor, you want him to be a scholar, you want him to whatever. But if you see that that guy doesn't want to do all those amazing things that you thought, in the end of the day, you will keep on taking care of him and trying just to, to help him to have his living. There's that, oh, like, eat, drink, wear a coat, like, don't go stupid in the rain, like... Come, sleep over, I'll, I'll, I'll drive you. Like, uh, that's how it's finished in the end of the day. Why? Because you have a heart. Because that person came out of your heart. That person is under your responsibility and you love him. And you just care and you cannot stop the fact that you care. Why? Because you have a godly soul inside of you. Because inside of you there is a spirit that is divine. It's a portion of heaven, Chelek Eloka Mimal, that is installed, is treasured inside your body. And that's why you feel, and that's why you sense, and that's why you care, and that's why you love, and that's why you respect. Because you carry a godly soul inside of you. And the character of heaven is being expressed by you. And you are that vehicle, you are that person that has that merit from heaven to carry a godly soul. 
in those physical journeys of your life to the grocery store, to the cinema, to take a, a movie, to, 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 to drive to the beach, to shopping, to, to, to meetings, to work, to restaurants, to eat, to buy food, to take a shower. And the Creator is coming with you. And you can feel if the water are hot or cold, and if you're enjoying that shower, that tub or not. And the Creator gives you His spiritual abilities that He installed inside of you in the nature and the secret and the purpose of your creation. That you will be a holy chariot that is delivering the light of God in your journeys. And that's who you are. Sometimes you forget. Why you forget? Because you look with your eyes and you don't realize that eyes cannot see. Eyes are flesh, are, are, are only um, organs. They cannot see. What can see when you see, when you look? What is looking? What, with which tool you see? With nothing. The fact that there is a hole in your eye, something crazy. It's like, it's impossible to understand. The fact that you have a hole in your eye, in your eye the place that you don't have an eye in it, that's the place that your soul can see through. Those are the windows, not your eye. Your eye is what that is surrounding the windows that through those windows you see. Who is seeing? Not your body. Your body cannot see. Your eyeball doesn't see. It's only the structure of those windows. But the soul see through the eye, through the pupil, through that hole that you have in the center of your eye. You cannot see. Hashem can see. The Creator, your soul can see. Your godly soul is seeing. Your soul can hear through the holes that you have in your ears. Your ears cannot hear anything. Your ears are worthless. It's nothing. It's flesh. It's nothing. It's a dead piece of earth. It's nothing. But the fact that you have holes and your soul can go in and out through those ears make you able to hear and that's how you can smell and that's how you can talk. Not your mouth and not your teeth and not, not, nothing. The power of speech is the power of God. The power of hearing, the power of eyesight, the power of smelling, all those, the power of your mind is not your brain. Your ba brain is a dead organ. It's nothing. It's flesh. It's bones. It's nothing. It doesn't work. The energy that revives it makes it hold the spirit that it's carrying. And that spirit is your soul. It's the spirit of Hashem that makes you alive. So who you are? You are the live part of your being. You're not your colors, and you're not your shape, and you're not your size, and you're not your nation, and you're not your accent, and you're not your family tree, and you're not your community. You are your soul, that your physical body that is connected to the community, to the place, to the family, to whatever, to colors, to... to, to all the crazy things that you feel or really physically attached to are, are, your, are your vehicle, are your chariot that is carrying God Himself inside of you. Inside my people I live, Hashem is saying. Now again, when we're talking about Ami, my nation, my people, remember, the nation of Israel are not only the Jewish nation. Jewish nation, our the tribe of Judah, our tribe of Levi, our part of tribe of Binyamin, our pure souls that join to the tribe of Judah when the tribe's been separated to two separate kingships, tribe of Judah and tribes of Israel. But when we're talking about Hashem's people, we're talking about the general nation of Israel. We're talking about 12 complete tribes. Who are those 10 lost tribes? It can be anyone in the street. You don't know. You don't have a clue. If you are not Jewish, or you don't know even if you're Jewish or not, but inside of you, you have a passion for purpose in life, and you're looking for God, 
you're stuck with us. Like, I'll tell you, <laughs> you're in a problem. You're one of us. <laughs> you're part of our gang. You can't run away. You carry an Israeli soul because the word Israel is divided to two words, Yeshar El, straight to God. When you are a truth seeker, when you are seeking for God, you can born Christian, you can born Muslim, you can born Hindu, it, it doesn't matter. If you are, like I have a student in India, she born to, to, to an Indian family. She, like, no connection in her family to Judaism. And over there in her, their country, in their section, everyone in their community are Christian and they look Indian. Everything is Indian over there. Everything, the color, the language, the families, the co everything is Indian over there. But she? She's Jewish. She like she doesn't care about it. You can't talk to her about anything except of Hashem. Ask why? No answer. Not her mother taught her that. Not her father taught her that. Not the teacher in school. She was talking to the Creator and she felt like that the Bible, that the Torah, that the way of Judaism is the right way. Why? No, no one can answer. I once told a story, and I am repeating myself, but I don't have anything more interesting to say, so I'm going to repeat myself again. A group of missionaries, Christians, came to visit the Holy Land of Israel to see the places that they're holding as holy stations and whatever. And one of the women, Christian woman, assumed to be Christian, came with them when they reached the Western Wall, part of their travels, she burst in cry and she started crying and she couldn't stop herself from crying. And everyone trying to relax her, hey, come down, drink something. Yes, it's very holy, whatever. But like something happened to that woman. She collapsed on the floor, almost fainted, crying, crying, cannot function, nothing. All the journey was for her a, a, a horrible experience. She couldn't get over that experience. She went back to the U.S sat with her mother telling her the story I don't know what happened to me I collapsed yeah, do you have any clue do you have some insights some, something nothing she went uh, reading consulting priests whatever everyone that were there with her she's asking and questioning no one knows anything one day she went and visiting her grandmother and start talking to her and asking her and telling her, you know, I've been to the Holy Land, I've been to Israel, whatever. I was on the Western Wall and suddenly I collapsed. And when she started telling the story, what happened to her, her grandmother started climbing on the walls, doesn't know what she do with herself, start walking from one room to the other, ignoring her in a certain time, start coughing, cannot talk, I must rest a little bit, like... Something happened and, and the girl, she's asking her grandmother, what happened? Please tell me, like, you, did I say something wrong? Did I hurt your feelings? Something I said? Whatever, the grandmother sat on the sofa, same thing happened to her. She cannot talk, she doesn't want to see no one. The mother is coming, phone calls, doctors, nothing. The woman, the grandmother does not communicate, she's not talking. After hours, the grandmother opened her mouth and she said, I born, I was born in, to, in the Holocaust, I don't, I don't know where, in which, in which part of Europe. And she said, all my family been killed by the Nazis and I'm the only survivor. And Christian saved my life and I made an oath that I will never say the truth about my nation because I was scared that, that something like that will happen, chas v'shalom, God forbid. And she said, I'm Jewish. What it means that her daughter is Jewish, what it means that that granddaughter is Jewish as well. And where she found out? In the Western Wall. How? No one told her. Her soul just went out of the body. Now, all of us were experiencing those things, like maybe not so strong, maybe in a different way, but like something is pulling us in life. Something is opening our eyes to see certain things. I remember my beginning of my process, like there were certain movies that I saw when I was completely far from Torah, from mitzvot, not doing, not keeping anything. And certain things, certain aspects were talking to me on coming back. 
on coming back and finding my true self. And those Hollywood movies and those amazing music albums that were, that were, that were cool and new and, 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 and famous in that, in like 20 years ago, they were the, the strings that the Creator was pulling to wake up my soul from my deep sleep. And He knew how to wake me up. And He chose the right messengers to call me and to remind me of my true nature, of my true being, of who I am. And He woke me up. And that's what He's doing with everyone. So everyone that is waking up, like there's nothing else to do except of just flow with it. Just flow to where your soul is, is calling you to, to go to. Because that's who you are. A friend of mine that passed away a few years ago, he was an artist and he was painting thousands of portraits. Thousands of portraits! Now, what are you doing? Another one? Yes. And another one? Yes. And another one? And he was not selling and he was not famous and he left his wife, his widow, with thousands of pictures. And now today she's about to make a first exhibition, a huge one, in Europe, in Germany. Now you don't know what you're doing. You have a passion to something. One is painting, one is making music, one is reading, one is learning. Like I told you on the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, you don't know that you are making changes in the world when you're painting, when you're singing, when you're choosing that mandarin and not that one, and that tomato out of 700 that looks exactly the same, but you had to take that one from the bottom of the pile. Why? No one knows. Hashem He knows. The knows He knows. Why? Because there are sparks in that tomato that connects to your spirit. And you need it and it needs you. And it calls you and you call it. And you don't hear the voice with your ears, but your soul can hear it, can feel it. And that's why you have to buy in that store and not in that one. And that one is cheaper and closer to your house, but you will go to that one. Why? Because it's calling you. And you can hear it only when you listen to your spirit. Only when you work on your self-awareness and you learn to listen to your inner voice that is guiding you in a straight path to heaven, to live eternal life while you're in a temporary body in this world, trapped in that fantasy world of illusion, Alma de Shikha, the world of lie, like the Zohar Kadosh is calling this world. The world of lie, world of illusions, Everything is showing faces and pretending to be something that it's not. Ignore the curtains of physicality. Listen to the voice. If you feel that cucumbers is your food right now, there is a purpose for it. You don't know how your body will take out the particles that are needed to heal you from dangerous illnesses and diseases that you're not aware that are attacking you while you have that desire to those pickles. And you don't know why. But the Creator already put the remedy and the potion to heal you in the pickles, in the avocado, in those mandarins, while it's raining, when it's wet, when I don't know what. Yes. Because it's your potion, because it's your health. And if you will let your spirit guide you, you will walk in the path of the righteous ones. You will walk in the path of the holy ones that are tuned from within, that are aware to the voice of Hashem that is talking to them from and using their souls for that. And you will be a person of God. You will reveal the fact that you are a person of God. Today you're not aware to yourself. You don't know why you received those gifts and someone else received others. You have your talents and you should use them. Your talents and not mine. You have your abilities, you have your surroundings, you have your beloved ones, people that need you, people that can be fed by you and only you. 
There are people that cannot hear me. They don't understand my language. They won't understand my words. But you, they will follow you to the desert. Why? You can't find the reason. But the Creator made the world built in that structure that they will be under you in that way that you can influence on them. So you're in charge on their souls to love them, to care about them. To reveal the godliness that is treasured inside of you. To be a role model for those people. And you know what will happen to them? They will learn from you how to become their true selves, themselves. And they will find the power to be who they are. To be proud of being who they are. And not always to think, oh, I must change, I cannot stay like that, I must do this, I must do tshuva, I must convert, I must be Jew. I, all those things I'm telling you, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. It's nonsense because if you don't realize what, how great the Creator is and how He already designed and built everything for you in a perfect way, that you just need to walk straight. <coughs> that you just need to listen to who you are. The Creator gave you knowledge. The Creator gave you skills. Put an armor on your body to protect you and to help you to deal with life adventures. That you will be a good and qualified messenger to go and to reveal godliness in the world. And for that you don't need to convert, and for that you don't need to be orthodox, and for that you don't need to be Mashiach. You just need to be who you are. Because you are needed in your location, in your spot, to be the representer of the Creator, to be a lighthouse to your surroundings. You don't need to change. If you feel that prayer is something that is talking to you, so do it. If you feel that singing is something that is talking to you, so do it. So sing. Sing your songs to Hashem. King David was able to sing. Can we see someone today that is able to sing? That will be also in the position of the King of Israel? That will be also in the position of the General of the Army? Thank you so much. Can we some, see someone in such a high position that will be able to break the holy tablets like Moses? We cannot. Why? Because people are cowards today. Because people today are afraid to be who they are. The leader of our nation is supposed to have the power to hold the holy tablets and to smash them down to the ground. Are you able to do that? If you're not able to do it, you're not qualified to lead our nation. That's for sure. Because the leader of our nation is supposed to be that one that will be ready to die for his camp, for his people. To be sacrificed in every situation, no matter which situ situation. All the chief rabbis in the generation of Moses were fighting against him. Every one of them, 240 judges of the biggest courts were all against Moses in his generation. All the husbands of that generation were suspecting Moses of being and hiding with their wives. All of the men in Moses' camp were suspecting him with, for hiding with their wives. Everyone, including everyone. That's Moses. He didn't do anything wrong, but he was a live fish. What's the sign for a live fish? He swims against the stream. Dead fish are sw swimming with the, with the stream, with the river. They're dead. They're all going, all going down to hell. Everyone are dead. Oh yeah, robots, droids, functioning. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Dead people. Dead. Dead people. Turned off souls. Turned off spirits. Live spirits are flashing, are illuminating in new shades, 
in fantastic voices and sounds, beautiful colors they're making. They're all colorful. One is green, one is blue, one is sparkling. Everyone is different. One makes movies and one makes music and one is dancing. King David was dancing. King David was singing. King David was learning. King David was fighting. King David had more than 20 wives, 18 wives, and he had lovers as well. King David, Mashiach, Tzidkenu, yes, the one that you, what? Yes. And he was holy, and he was righteous, and he was pure, and you don't understand how pure and how holy he was. Because he was a man enough to give love to 20 women. You don't understand how that can be. You know why? Because you still don't know how to respect your wife. Because you don't have a clue how to love one person. Because you yourself is disconnected from your true nature, from your real being. You don't know who you are. You don't understand who you are. And it doesn't mean that you need to go now and look for women. No! You need to be aware to who you are. You need to follow in the path of truth. To be connected to the power of your body, to the power of your mind, to your abilities to your talents, to the mission of your life, to the purpose of your life. What's the purpose of your life? Ask yourself. I have a friend that for years he was working hard to convert. For years he invested all his life in that. He invested years of his life. He divorced his wife. He broke his family. He changed everything. When? In the day that he'd been approved. He felt like, I'm doing something wrong with myself. I'm not being honest. I'm letting an external, outside pressure, pressuring me to do it. I don't feel I'm ready. And he backed off. And all of his life been opened like an act of miracle. You cannot understand the wonders and the amazing things that happened to him he saw the supervision of Hashem, the one that he followed with all of his heart, that was showing to him that now he went on the right path, that now he's choosing with his heart, that now he's doing the right thing. Another person can say, oh, he'd been rejected. He didn't have the merit. You can talk. You know when you can talk? When you are disconnected. When you don't feel. But he was connected. So he felt that Hashem wanted him to be a Noahide. That Hashem wanted him to keep on communicating with his old friends. And not to feel that he does not belong to a new community. With new people. Following their orders. Fulfilling the obligation. Must make everyone like him. And become a slave. Instead of being who he is. And proudly to represent the Creator, the one that he believes, that to his light he's walking, marching proudly. That's the path of the righteous ones. That they're not answering people. That they're not justifying themselves 24-7. They're following with the truth that is shining from within. There is one truth. If you believe that there is one truth, you should believe that every person that you will help him to search for his truth, he will come to the same center point of truth because there is only one truth. He will find it from his place, she will find it from her place, and you will find it from yours because you were truthful to look for the center, for the core, for the essence, for the truth. And you shall find it. Because the Creator is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. If He's calling in Chinese, or if He's calling in Portuguese, or if He's calling in Hebrew, or He's calling in English, or I don't know in which other language, in Deutsch. If you're asking for the truth, you shall find it. Because the Creator will reveal His loving kindness on you because you asked for the truth. Because you asked it from your heart. And the Creator will stand by your side and will reveal His loving kindness on you because you were truthful, because you were loyal, 
And if your path is to convert, you will know it. And if your path is to be orthodox, you will know it. And if your path is to stay where you are and just to shine, so you will know it. Because the truth is something that we can recognize. If I'm asking you a question, you know, you can feel the truth about that question. Do you have money? You don't have money? You live close by? You don't live close by? Every question, do you know Hebrew? Do you, do, did you learn? Did you read that book? Every question that I will ask you, you will know the truth. You know the truth about everything. The things that you claim for not knowing the truth about those things are the things that you are avoiding from asking yourself the questions all the way. So you don't know, I don't know, I don't know, no, no, you do. You know that you don't ask yourself the truth. Come aside, you wanted to say something? Not yet? One day you will? Maybe, no. He knows, he don't. The Creator is great enough to make a path for every individual. You don't need to change. You just need to listen to the inner voice of your soul that is speaking to you from within and to follow it with a brave heart, with a happy heart, with a wishing soul. To find the truth that the Creator treasured inside of you in the nature of your creation. That's the purpose of your life, to find out who you are, who He made you to be, and what's your mission. Ask yourself, until you find it. And when you will, you'll be the happiest person in the world, because you'll find your answer. That's the answer. Who you are and what you're doing here, that's the question of your life. What am I doing here? What's going on? Why am I working in this job? Why am I married to that wife? Why am I married? Why those are my children? Why in that house? Why in that country? Why? Why? Those are the questions of your life. The answer is hidden inside the question. Listen. Connect yourself with a daily conversation with yourself. Ask from heaven for guidings. Ask Him, tell Him, listen, I'm working and I suffer. I don't like that job. Guide me. Open my eyes. Let me recognize the supervision on my life. Tell me why. Why in this country? Why not there? Why not there? What's the purpose? What's the use? Why am I here? And He will open your eyes to see. To the ones that are brave enough to ask, He will answer. Every request, every, uh, every question that you will ask will be answered when you will ask it with truth. When you will be truthful while asking it. And you will be answered. Thank you very much. Hashem bless you all. That all your prayers will be answered. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם שהכל נהיה בדברו. אמונה פרויקט is a non-profit organization, it's my organization, our organization. We're traveling like crazy in the world, you can't believe it. We can't, we don't even remember what we're doing. I'm asking my wife, where, where was my last class? And it was like four hours ago, like where, where were we? One country to the next, one country to the next, crossing. Started in New York and on our way back through California. It's one month and a half of travels. Please help us, please support our activities. We have books that I wrote, children books that I wrote and illustrated. CDs with classes, CDs with music, and everything is original and good quality. And you're supporting us and helping us to save souls along the way. Thank you very much. Be blessed. And thank you for driving and coming. Thank you so much. Please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com.